Rory Schmidt, 97.1 The Fan. You made an effort to keep your players from getting too rah-rah on Fridays. Is it ever a concern before then that they might emotionally spend themselves too much on like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Sure. Yeah, I think uh, that's something we watch. I, I think uh, I've not had that issue with this team. You know, this would be a game, and obviously the one after that would be a game that you worry about. But uh, I try to watch that, and our strength coach does a good job helping me with that. So I, I haven't felt that yet. How do you keep from getting – I mean, you're the guy that has to center the team. How do you stay centered from – We're just uh, – there's so many holes on this team right now that we're trying to keep together and, and – uh, some, some, there's some weaknesses are all of a sudden turning into strengths. So our, our focus, I've never really had a problem with that because the focus just get through a Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday practice. Second row middle, Bob. Two weeks left, two, two games left. <coughs> one only four unbeaten teams left. I know you're concentrating on the games and all that, but you ever have to, you don't have very many opportunities to go undefeated. Do you ever fight the urge of, of thinking, of what you're losing by not getting the chance to play a bowl game or a game. Uh, you know, I, I, I could lie to you and say that uh, uh, I don't every once in a while, but not, not as much as I thought. You know, I just, uh, I hear it and I read it once in a while and I'll just uh, have good friends in the profession or that'll make a comment and I'll think for a second, but then I go back to knowing exactly who we are and you go back to... Uh, how we've won and who we are right now, and you're pretty fortunate where we are. And let's find a way to get number 11. So, I tried uh, years ago not to control what we can't control. And that, that's uh, we got to have a really good Tuesday practice. We can't control that. We can't control anything else. Middle row left, David. Dave Briggs, Salida Blade. Following up on a couple of earlier questions, I think you mentioned you do discuss the polls with the team. Just as an incentive this deep into the season, even though the odds might be very long, have you mentioned the thought of an AP national title with them just to kind of throw that out there? You know, I haven't. I uh, usually do that. I haven't for some reason. I have not even addressed that the last few weeks because these guys are, you know, I just like our team meetings, man. We're, we're going and we're talking about practice. We're talking about how to stop one of the most potent run games in America and how to, you know, they have 300-pound-plus defensive tackles. So, you know, I used to have State of the Unions. I think that's probably what you remember when I told you that. I did talk about that in the past. And our guys know where they're at and we're good. We just got to, I mean, I really like coaching this team right now. And that's not worrying about the nonsense. So that's we haven't really discussed it. Middle left, Brandon. Uh, I was just wondering what your message was to the youth team when you kind of finished up practice last week, going into the weekend, kind of what you wanted them to be prepared for coming into this week. Well, I, I always, you, the thing, number one thing you worry about is that phone call. You know, everybody driving home to see families or doing something ignorant on a Friday or Saturday night. And so uh, my comment was if it's going to help us win our 11th game, do it and do it a lot. If it's not, don't do it. And. Uh, they came back bright-eyed, and that's the number one thing you worry about is when they go home. And uh, I think it's a great opportunity, especially for local guys, to go home with their families, and we really encourage that and go to their high school football game and all that fun stuff. So. Middle left, Doug. Doug Lindsay's the Clint dealer. Herman, you obviously, when you got here, you had a good sense of the Michigan rivalry with Ohio State. <laughs> What's your sense of the rivalry with Wisconsin? Today? Pretty good. Yeah, I, I'm learning about it, and they, uh, I think they uh, stole a, a season. From, or a, uh, they were telling me that story a little bit. Um, but it's interesting hearing our players talk about it, especially the ones that I listen to, um, the guys that have been in some of those big games. So uh, it's real interesting. Uh, but this is a this is a this is a rivalry game, and it's a rivalry game because you know you have to understand who you're playing and, and what they've done the last few years. So they're they're a good, very good team. I know the focus this week with, with the Wisconsin offense is on the run game, but what you have at corner this year with, with Travis Howard and Bradley Roby, whether it's this week or just in general, the way those two guys have played, how, how good have they been and what has it done overall for the defense to have two guys like that? Yeah, it's a great question, and I think uh, with two games left, you don't want to jinx them. Like, he jinxed our team already. Uh, but uh, I, I think those guys have played very well. I think Coach Combs has come in and demanded uh, um, two talented players. One was a freshman or a redshirt freshman, I guess Roby was last year. And then Travis, to me, uh, uh, I can say this because it's how much respect I have for him now, was not a good player. I mean, it was a guy that kind of lined up out there, but I, I would consider him a good player. He's Him and his coach have worked themselves into being, I think, a very good player. So uh, they're, they're falling our category. That's one of the most improved position groups on our team. No question about it.
back right. Well, if you see six, similar to Doug's question, do you see this as bad blood? There's a pretty rich recent history here, and is bad blood healthy? Uh, I, I think it's, uh, I don't, bad blood as far as, you know, I'm not quite sure of the question, but it's, I think whenever you have two good teams that have played for a lot in the past three, four years, uh, if that's considered bad, bad blood, then, uh, I mean, it's, it's an intense uh, respect for getting ready. They know what's coming. I can tell it the way they practice today. And they're smarter than the coaches. You can see what's coming. They know what's coming. I always worry about the ones they don't have respect for. And that's when we got to rah rah and cheer them on and scream and yell and throw things and all that. You don't, I, I, other than teaching technique and we didn't have to teach them to go hard today. And that's an indication of the respect they have for the team they're playing. Thank you.